Freddy Rasmussen, 13 races now. Freddy just has this knack to just pick it up and be fast. Freddy Rasmussen brilliantly wins. This talent is just ridiculous, unlike anything I've ever seen. First victory of the season. I've never worked with someone with so much pure talent. With a brilliant drive, 10th on the grid to victory. He's incredibly consistent. Look at the standings from the previous four years that he's come runner-up. Always the bridesmaid, never the bride. <laughs> what a race from Freddy Rasmussen. He took the gamble. He wins at Abu Dhabi. For event three of the F1 Sim Racing World Championship, we had five races remaining. Second event, we probably did a lot better than we expected. Freddy Rasmussen getting the jettison out of these final corners. The Red Bull giving him wings once again. And it's double Dutch Grand Prix delight for Freddy Rasmussen. We came away from it with Freddy with a substantial lead in the drivers. And we had a, a comfortable lead in the team's championship as well. The Great Dane ushers in the overspeed working for him. Murray Burman knows he's in trouble around the final corner. It's a magical number three for Freddy Rasmussen. He wins the United States Grand Prix. We made our second trip to Stockholm. We went in feeling very confident. After event two, we were looking really good. The constructors was us and then Ferrari, Mercedes. We cannot start thinking about the championship that early on. There were still five races to go. That can easily swing into someone else's favor. Welcome to event three of the F1 Sim Racing World Championship. We are back. Ferrari front row lockout, at least for now, but the timer is ticking. Mexico was a very positive start for us. It comes now, Freddy Rasmussen, he splits the Ferraris. Great quality, great finishing results from both Freddie and Josh, which is absolutely what we needed. And it's pedal to the metal, and it is go, 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 go! Barry Burman off the line, so is Freddie Rasmussen. They're keeping it dialed in, and right up close and personal. It was hardship in event two, he hails in event three! It's victory for Thomas Ronha! Freddie Rasmussen, the championship leader, though, strong result for him, P3, and that is exactly what he needs to do. That was an instant feeling of relief, like, oh. Okay, we're all right, we're fine. And then we did have uh, a couple of issues. Yeah, so restart the game for it, I guess. Stutter. Okay, I'll report it. There was an unfortunate issue with um, stuttering on the screen that as you're driving, the, the frames almost have a, a judder to them and when you're driving incredibly fast on the game, that can have a real impact on your driving. When the margins are so fine, one tenth of a second can be the difference between pole position and P10. Thomas Ronhart once again getting a brilliant launch off the line to, and certainly Freddie Rasmussen thought that he might be able to challenge for Simon Vigang, an even better start coming out of turn two. So do you think you're faster in Ronhart or same pace? Lower. Okay. So we just follow him, whatever he does. He's catching way too far. Yeah, no, yeah, we cannot do much about this. I have nothing. Yeah, no, I know. It's a triple dream for Thomas Ronha. He wins the Sao Paulo Grand Prix. Worst experience of my life. Oh, <laughs> there goes both championships. Like no status, but like low FPS. And the lap times he was doing in practice were also like down. There are tracks where the entire field is within one tenth, like in Brazil. If you have a poor performance in one session, then you're out. We were feeling very nervous, I think. We'd had good, decent results with Freddy, but we could see the team's championships getting a lot closer. We could see people were catching up to Freddy. Heading into day two of event three, we had Las Vegas and Qatar, which are two tracks that we've never competed on before. So they kind of threw in a bit of an unknown and then qualifying happened. So again, Freddie Rasmussen, not as comfortable as maybe Thomas Ronha is looking. And now, Freddie Rasmussen in a bit to take pole away. He can't, can only go as high as fifth. Freddie Rasmussen, a little bit further down the field. Yep, I'm caught. I can't do anything. It's championship over. Freddy Rasmussen out of qualifying, folks. That is your breaking news. Massive shocks have the frailties kicked in now in the closing stages of the championship. He got knocked out in Q2, which 
Um, for Freddie, obviously, it felt like the end of the world. You don't just lose a tenth in qualifying pace versus your practice pace. It just doesn't happen. Yeah, Freddie alongside me. Freddie, unfortunate out there. A new track, uh, tricky as well. Can you just talk me through what happened? Yeah, I can, but I think I'll get a penalty if I do. We need to fix the computer issues. You feel kind of powerless to it, I suppose. You can be upset with the circumstances and, and, and voice your concern around it and do what you can to fix it once it's happened, but the fact that it's happened, you can't change. The IT guys are still looking at stuff, they're looking as, as we're speaking to you just now. Um, like I say, we're fairly confident, or we're, we're hopeful at least, that these software modifications to start will make a difference, um, if not remedy it. And if that isn't the case, then we'd need to work with IT a bit closer to see what's happening there. And these guys have been very helpful. Imagine if the PCs were good in the first place. It's been, a, it's been a bit of a funny day for you guys. Um, some of the things out of Freddie's control, um, but we're back in, we're ready for race. How are you feeling? No, we're feeling good. I think uh, the week has shown and, and the previous event has shown that anything can happen during these races. I think Las Vegas is going to be particularly interesting, uh, to say the least. I think it's got every potential to be a bit spicy, but you know, <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. And it is go, 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 go! Nicholas Longay gets the jump on Thomas Ronha, heading through towards turn one. Yano Watmi ahead of Brendan Lee, who's managed to surpass Freddie Rasmussen. Rasmussen again, not getting the start he was looking for. Also coming through is Thomas Ronha. He's burst through, maintained his place ahead of Rasmussen now. Rasmussen in the Red Bull, and I must say, things are looking a little tricky. Pedrenio now as well, so the Alpines moving ahead of the Red Bull. Goodness me, what is happening to Freddie Rasmussen? They rolled the dice! It's Barry Burman, your victory! Here at Vegas, oh my and it's Longay who takes P2, Ferrari 1-2, and Yano Omnia moves into third. Freddie ended up finishing P6 in Vegas, which is right where he started. I think in Freddie's mind, you know, he has to be on a podium to, you know, stand a fighting chance. When you watch a healthy lead sort of disappearing before you, yeah, in my head I did have this thought of, oh, God. Like, this is going really wrong. After the incredible fight that we witnessed at Vegas, the complexion of this championship has somewhat changed. With Thomas Ronhart now only 18 points behind Freddie Rasmussen, we're going to be in for a real treat as we send it around this very sandy circuit. Just this race can just... Yes. Okay. 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 That probably still not Starting P13 on a track where there is only one overtaking spot to move up through the grid would be very, very difficult. Ronhart challenging Burman! The overtakes he did in the initial laps, very critical moves. As we now see Freddy Rasmussen looking to move on up, he brushes past Yoni Tormala. It was really unfortunate when we got blocked by the Aston Martin, who was trying to help his teammate. It started to heat up here at the Lost Isle, and to know so defending the place, trying to keep Ido in behind. It did have a real knock-on effect with the performance for the team. Fabrizio Donoso is going so slowly, holding these guys up to try and help out his teammate. Brad knew that he had to deliver that race. The pressure was on and he did that. What a performance as well from the Great Dane. He was below the top 10. He wasn't in the top 10. He is now up to P5. Freddie managed to pull off an absolutely phenomenal race. It was what he needed to keep the title fight alive. This is excellent effort, Fred. Amazing drive. What happened to Josh? Uh, he got by this idiot from Aston. He blocked him completely. completely I'm gonna right now. That's not racing. No points, Ferrari 1-2 again. That was when it was pretty much pretty much done because they gained so many on us. It, it was disappointing and it felt like a cheap way to lose your chance of winning a team's title. It hurts to think back on what on the way that that was done.
Today is the day. Today we crown the champion of the 23-24 F1 Sim Racing World Championship. The feeling in the studio was incredibly tense. Any semblance of friendship that we had with other teams was completely left at the door. I think the mood was pretty good. I believed in Freddie and I knew that he, he had the ability to do it. And now, enter Lucas Blakely. He moves up to third as well. Freddie Rasmussen, this is the one we've been waiting for. Can he improve? No. Thomas Ronard, last but not least. Is he going to usurp the Ferraris up towards the line? He does! This is huge for the championship. An extra point that now only takes him 12 points away from Frederick Rasmussen. Strong performance from the Ferrari drivers as well. Straight after quali, we had uh, the game plan. I was starting P7 with Freddie in P8. We knew that uh, we should have to move up by four positions to be safe. It's all to play for. And it's pedal to the metal, and it is go, 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 go. Great start from Barry Burman. He'll have the inside, but Thomas Ronard holds the lead of the race. Coming out of turn one now, they'll now flurry through towards turns two and three. The Ferraris together, Longe in third, Blakely tucked away in fourth as well. Plan A, beating Josh very early. Tom Manley and Josh Edu, they're going early into the box. That's to try and jump the guys who are on the hard side. They did not react. So plan B. Nicholas Longe now 1.4, 1.3 seconds behind Josh Edu. Let's see how this works out. What's stopping them using Edu making, well, just making their life a misery here? I was willing to get the elbows up to, to really help him win that championship. And next up is Josh Edu. Longe knows they need to get past and Edu is making it so difficult for them. Josh is doing a great job of holding up the Ferraris and helping out his teammate up the front. Both Ferraris are going to move on up. They do move up. Thomas Ronha, who now looks to open up the door on Edu. He's being attacked on all fronts. Contact made again. Ronard going long. He takes him. He takes him. That saved a couple of seconds for Fred, which meant that he was able to close up. So we rejoin the battle at the front, and look at this. Thomas Ronhar has now caught up to the tail of Nicholas Longe. We have a race, Aiden Gullis. The championship standings and who was going to win was literally changing with every corner. And down the inside maneuver from the Dutchman. He takes the lead of the race. Championship winning move right there. Thomas Ronhart, as it stands, will be our champion. Nicholas Longe, now what he can do is go a little bit slow. Hold up Frederick Rasmussen. If Rasmussen's down into stick, whoever takes the win takes the championship. My heart was in my mouth. I couldn't look away. The Dane breaks later, but Longe keeps it on the outside. We get the inside line into the second part of the case. Rasmussen is back in a chance to win this title. Ronald's forced to the outside. Butcher goes for second. In fact, he goes for the lead. Then out of nowhere, Alfie Butcher just came through. He takes down Barry Burman. And what this does right now is it hands the championship back to Frederick Rasmussen. Ron Hart out of battery, oh. but he sends it up the inside of the Ferrari driver of Barry Burman. They're wheel to wheel. But here comes Frederick Rasmussen. A pass, both of them, into second place. And that's a great position to take the championship. Ron Hart, big send up the inside. Does he make it stick? Yes, he does. He's going to try and challenge Ronar into turn five. Rasmussen up to second place. But here comes Ronar once again back up into second place. But this still would not be enough. It does look like on the face of it that finally the dream has been answered. Knowing that happened, you were like, oh my God, he's going to do it. He's actually going to do it. It is going to be Freddy Rasmussen. You are the bridesmaid no longer. Freddy Rasmussen has finally managed to achieve it. You are an F1 Sim Racing champion. When he turned that final corner and went over the line, I couldn't believe it. It was unbelievable to watch. It's just a massive relief at the moment. Uh, I think it means a lot to everybody. My family has always been supportive. Red Bull as well, they're doing everything they can. We made it. Thank you very much. You went right down to the wire, but we uh, only got on, didn't it? Yeah, enjoy it, man. Beautiful. Thank you. Well done, too. The story started five years ago when Freddie joined Oracle Red Bull Sim Racing. He, he's finally done it. He is finally a world champion. Yeah. You proved me wrong. He solidified his status as a legend within the F1 sim racing community there.
I reckon now, I do think now, we're probably going to see the most frightening version of Freddie ever because he hasn't got the weight of expectation of winning win. After all these years, that might be Freddie's first championship, but we're not going to stop there. Yeah. Yeah. Being recorded, I should say some controversial. <laughs> <laughs>